Hello to my brothers and sisters in Christ. Um, if you have your Bibles, turn with me to the book of Romans, uh, chapter 4. And we're going to begin at that um, 17th verse. And it reads, As it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations before him whom he believed, even God, who quickeneth the dead and calleth those things which be not as though they were, who against hope believed in hope, that he might become the father of many nations according to that which was spoken, so shall thy seed be. And being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body now dead, when he was about an hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God. And being fully persuaded that what he, God, had promised, he was able to perform. Let us pray. Holy Father, we come in the name of Jesus. And again, we just want to say thank you for the reading and the hearing of your word. We ask that your word will go out and not return to your void, but that it will accomplish that which you send it to do. We're so thankful for your goodness, your mercy, and your grace. I ask that you will forgive the sins of everyone, O oh God, under the sound of my voice, that you will pardon our transgressions and purge our iniquities. It is in you, O oh God, that we put our trust. It is in you, O oh God, that we hope. We thank you for your love, even the more that's shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit. For it is through Christ Jesus and the ability of your Holy Spirit that you have given us the means to do what you have requested or desired. In Jesus' name, we praise you and we thank you. Amen. Today, we want to discuss the end or goal of the relationship between the believer and Jesus Christ, our Savior. Yet at the same time, get an understanding of how we are to function according to God's purpose for our lives. Many of us no doubt believe that God created the heaven, the earth, the seas, and all that is therein. We believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God who died for our sins, rose from the dead, and is now sitting on the right-hand side of the Father in heaven. We believe also that the Holy Ghost was sent to us as a gift to be our comforter, guide, and our helper. Amen? We have a strong belief in the integrity of God's word, believing them, his word, to be sound, undivided doctrine. But can we really understand or see the process of believing, especially with all the distractions, chaos, and confusion that surrounds us daily? You see, to believe is to accept something as being true or real, to expect results, to have faith in, to have confidence in the truth, value, or existence of someone or something. To believe is simply to trust. Abraham, being the father of us all, understood this. And when we look at the scriptures, even in verse 19, when it says, and being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body now dead when he was about 100 years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God and being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was able also to perform. So, Abraham had trust. He had faith. He believed in that which God had told him and showed him. He had a strong belief or confidence in the ability or power of God's word and a strong belief or confidence in the character of God as a person. And as Abraham became more mature, he gave God, how you say, um, custody or control of the situations that surrounded his life, believing in the choices God made for his life and totally dependent on and expected from God successful results. You see, how you believe or trust God would be how you see God. Let me say that again. How you believe or trust God will be how you see God. And the times that we now live in make it difficult to hear, see, or believe. Amen? If you hear that he is a deliverer, 
but can't believe, you will never see yourself delivered. If you hear that God is a healer but can't believe, you will never see yourself healed. If you hear that God was made poor so that you could be rich but can't believe, you will always be in poverty, mentally, emotionally, and physically. So how you believe or trust God and his word will be how you see God. When you put your trust or confidence in someone or something, you're saying that that person or thing will not fail in the performance of what is said or done. Think about it. That's what Abraham did. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God, being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was also able to perform. And listen, even if it's not supported by proof, you are confidently sure. Psalms, the ninth chapter, the 10th verse says, and they that know thy name will put their trust, their faith, their confidence in thee. For thou, Lord, has not forsaken them that seek thee, saying to us that God is faithful concerning his word. In these last days, I am concerned, and I believe that God is also concerned as to how we look at him and what we think of him. If you look around, souls are dying every moment, and we suffer with shame and pain, but there is no deep power And the scripture says that many have a form of godliness, but deny the power thereof. You have the sick and diseased crying to be healed. Those bound and in captivity to drugs crying to be set free. People have thoughts of suicide and deep depression. The lost, backslid, and desperate are waiting to hear not just a word, but an anointed word a word with power to assist and support their faith. Yet all many can think about or concern themselves with is what they want or what they need. But have you ever considered that God allows you to have a need so you can pray for the need of someone else? Or that God allows you to have a need to be healed And you would get yours, your healing, if you prayed for someone else to get theirs. Yet we miss it. And many of us are guilty of this very thing. And yet God is good. God is so good to us. Even when we don't deserve it, he is faithful. And it's wonderful that his mercy endures forever and that his grace is enough. But I believe that God, even as we do, wants to be loved and appreciated, respected and honored. Listen, for who he is, amen? He wants to be worshiped and praised, admired and adored, to hear how wonderful he is, how holy and righteous, to hear that he is good, loving, kind. He wants to be thanked for his forgiveness, his long-suffering, and for working things out for us. He wants to be dependent on for his abilities, power, and strength. But because we have been let down by mankind and our own shortcomings, because we have put our trust or confidence in them, dependent on and trusted people's lying words and weaknesses, because we've been crushed, hurt, and disappointed, Some have become hard-hearted and are not responding to any help God offers, refusing to forgive or forget, even though we want to be forgiven, refusing to start again fresh. And that's why it's hard to freely give God the praise and the worship that he deserves, because our situations and our circumstances have us weighed down. 
we have built, many of us, inner walls so wide and so high that nothing can get in. But listen, neither can we get out. We're content knowing how mentally that God has given us wonderful promises in his word. But because we can't trust, believe in, or depend on people anymore who we see every day, it's very hard to trust, believe in, and depend on the abilities of God who we can't see. And with our affection set on everything but God, with us being distracted by life events, TV shows, movies, and the drama in the lives of others, one would wonder if God sees us now as he did Israel in Isaiah, the 42nd chapter, robbed and spoiled. Let's look at that. Isaiah, the 42nd chapter, and let's look at the... Um, 22nd verse and it reads but this is a people robbed and spoiled they are all of them snared in holes and they are hid in prison houses they are for a prey and none delivereth for spoil and none saith restore who among you will give ear to this who will listen and hear for the time to come who gave Jacob for a spoil and Israel to the robbers did not the Lord he against whom we have sinned, for they would not walk in his ways, and neither were they obedient to his word, his law. Yet when you listen to this, this is why God sent Jesus. So God continues day in and day out trying to convince us, as he did Israel, that in spite of all things, he loves us that he cares for us, that he alone is God and that his word is true. If you turn with me to Isaiah, the 43rd chapter, let's look at that first verse and it reads, but now thus saith the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed thee. I have called thee by thy name, thou art mine. Verse 2 says, when thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee, and through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned, neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. For I am the Lord thy God, the Holy One of Israel, thy Savior. He says, I gave Egypt for thy ransom, Ethiopian Seba for thee. Since thou was precious in my sight, thou hast been honorable, and I have loved thee. Therefore will I give men for thee and people for thy life. Verse 10 and 12 says, Ye are my witnesses, saith the Lord, and my servant whom I have chosen, that ye may know and believe me and understand that I am he. Before me there was no God form, neither shall there be after me. I, even I am the Lord, and beside me there is no Savior. I have declared and have saved. I have showed when there was no strange God among you. Therefore, you are my witnesses, saith the Lord, that I am God. Now listen to that. I have showed when there was no strange God among you, allowing us to know that sin, idols, separate us from the four blessings of God. We have to trust and love him. But when we put anything before him, it hinders, holds back, or slows up that which God desires or even has for us. The word would be, Lord, we believe. Help us to commit. Help us to pledge or bind ourselves more to your word, your purpose for our lives, and to prayer. Help us to learn to exercise our faith to believe in, trust in, and depend totally on your choices for our lives. For God said, I know the thoughts and plans that I have for you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not evil, to give hope in your final outcome. So when you look at this scripture in Jeremiah, the 29th chapter and 11th verse, it's telling us to be encouraged. Even Paul wanted Timothy to know 
that God was in control. Let's look at 1 Timothy, the fifth chapter. Um, yeah, the fifth chapter. I'm sorry, the first chapter. And that fifth verse, and it reads, Now the end of the commandment is love out of a pure heart and of a good conscience and of faith unfeigned. Now the end of the commandment is love or charity out of a pure heart and of a good conscience and of faith unfeigned. And Paul also wanted Timothy to know that God loves us. Let's look at verse 12. And I thank Christ Jesus, our Lord. This is Paul talking to Timothy, who has enabled me for that he counted me faithful, putting me into the ministry. Who was before a blasphemer and a persecutor and injurious. He says, but I obtained mercy because I did it ignorantly in unbelief. Verse 14, and the grace of our Lord was exceeding abundant with faith and love, which is in Christ Jesus. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Listen, of whom I am chief. How be it for this cause, I obtain mercy that in me first, Jesus Christ might show forth all long suffering for a pattern to them which should hereafter believe on him to life everlasting. Listen to what he says. I obtain mercy. He says that in me first, Jesus Christ might show forth all long suffering, patience for a pattern to them which should hereafter believe on him to life everlasting. In other words, he was letting us know that what he did was bad, very bad. And a lot of times what we do is bad, very bad. But he wanted Timothy to know and us to know that God is in control and that he loves us. So we have to learn to accept and trust God for who he is, our strength, our help, our provider our healer, our deliverer, our father, our mother, and our friend. We have to learn to depend on what he has said concerning you. There are many great promises in God's word, and we are blessed with the blessings of Abraham. And if we are obedient, we can expect successful results in our lives, our situations, and our circumstances. Why? Because all things work together for good to them that what? Love God. Listen, we can preach and teach, but people have a God-given right to choose to do what they want. But remember, in Ecclesiastes, the 8th chapter and 11th verse, it says, because sentence against an evil work is not executed speedily. It doesn't happen right away. The heart or mind of a man is fully set in him to do evil. But when the love in you is enough, you will realize 1 John, the fourth chapter, and that fourth verse says, you have God, little children, and have overcome them, and truly believe or trust that it is because of this fact. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. You see? And we'll say it again. To believe is to accept something as being true or real. To expect results. To have confidence in the truth, value, or existence of someone or something. To believe is simply to trust. To love God is to trust God. To have confidence in the truth, value, or existence of who he is. Amen. Let us pray. Holy Father, we come in the name of Jesus. And again, we just want to say thank you for the reading and the hearing of your holy word, your scriptures. We ask even the more that your divine will be done. We thank you, O oh God, for all that you do and are yet doing by faith. We know that you are in control in spite of all that is going on in the earth. We take this time, O oh God, to lift up those who are sick in their bodies. We're asking that you would heal. 
We're asking that you would touch those hearts and minds that are heavy, that you would strengthen, oh God, and encourage. It is your will that we are healed. It is your will that we are delivered. It is your will, oh God, that we walk in your truth. So I'm asking you, oh God, to move by your spirit, to heal all manner of sickness and diseases, infirmities, infections, and viruses, to deliver those that are yet bound and in captivity to lust and perversion, to drugs and alcohol, oh God, bound in their hearts and in the minds, taken captive by things that they desire to be free of. Heavenly Father, you are the only true and living God, and we ask even the more that your divine will be done, and it is in Jesus' name that we praise you. Amen. <music>